So we're back in settings, which is where I want to be because I want to show you some of the scanning settings. So if we keep going down this menu, switch control is the absolute function. So we turn it on or off with that green slider. Switches we already went into and we set up this switch. Auto scanning is what's happening now. So the cursor is moving around the screen by itself and we just press the switch to interact with it. In a, in a future video, I'll show you two switch scanning with auto scanning turned off. But for single switch, we need the auto scanning on. There's a group of timing settings next. Um, auto scanning time is the speed at which that cursor is moving around the screen. So I'll just press it to start it again. So the default is one second. If I go in, I can make it much faster. So let me put it down to say 0.4 seconds. It's moving around far too fast for me at this point, but I know some switch users who will love having that really fast speed. And I can make it really quite slow, so I could increase it. Well, at the moment it's 2.05 seconds. So I hit my switch and it's going to move much more slowly around the screen. I'm going to go back to the default of one second because I find that's quite comfortable for me and we'll go out of the scanning time. Pause on first item is an interesting feature. It's something that's been available in traditional assistive technology. Um, I know the Zygo McCaw used to have it and a lot of users that I worked with loved it. They loved having that extra time on the first item just to orient themselves and it made them much more accurate with their scanning. So I'm gonna turn that on. The default is an extra half second. So the first item will actually scan for one and a half seconds and then it'll move up to the one second timing. So that's pause on first item. Um, loops is the number of times it's going to go around the screen after I press the switch while it's looking for me to press the switch again. If I don't press it, it will go around four times and then turn itself off. Most users prefer three, two or one, but you can go all the way up to 10 loops if that's what you need. I'm just gonna go back in there and set that to three actually. So that's my preference. All right. Auto tap is a little setting where you actually turn that pop-up menu off. Um, so it turns off and then as you're scanning, let me just show you, let's turn it off. Okay, we'll turn it on. So now if I select over here, for example, that menu no longer appeared. Instead, there's 0.75 of a second where that setting goes blue, whatever you're scanning around. And in that time, if you press the switch again, the menu will pop up. So there it is. So if you don't want to always have that menu popping up, that's an option for turning it off, but you're going to need quite quick timing to be able to um, launch the menu. You can change that, 0.75 seconds is the default, but you can increase that if you need a bit longer. But yeah, if having that menu pop up all the time is um, not, not your desired outcome, that's the way to get it off and still have access to it when you need it. Now, any Apple application like Notes that we looked at before and the iOS will be accessible with the Switch. What, um, whoops, what you'll find is the iOS itself will also be accessible with the Switch. Individual apps are going to have more varied access and we'll have a look at three. Um, I'm going back into Switch Control and I am going to keep going through these options. So we looked at Auto Tap. I'm going to turn that back off so I do get the menu popping up all the time. Hold duration is the period of time the user needs to press the switch for before the iPad um, reacts to it. So this is really useful for um, someone who accidentally does lots of quick hits of their switch. Um, you can set it so that it needs to be a much more deliberate press. Ignore repeat is also useful for someone who does um, accidental second presses. So they press the switch once, they meant to do that and then they accidentally hit it again. You can set it to ignore that second press. Gliding cursor speed is the next setting and we'll have a look at the gliding cursor later on. Sound effects. So in here, I can go and turn on, oops, let me turn it on, um, a click noise. So let me get out of this. Start scanning happening. You can hear that click noise as it moves around the screen. I know many users that like that click noise, particularly when they're learning scanning. Um, and I know lots of people who don't like it. So it's there as a setting if you need it. 
let me go back into settings and we'll turn that click off the next option is speech and that's um, kind of an auditory scan using the voiceover cues as the speech um, I'm not going to turn that on right now I'll do that at the very end and I'll show you um, how that has an impact on some apps um, included menu items are all the things that are going to pop up when that little floating menu appears so if you don't want home available or settings available you can turn that off in there and let's go down here um, finally we've got group items so group items is this setting now where it's grouping things as it scans I can turn that off and now it's going to scan every single thing on the screen it should scan everything on the screen completely individually probably have to wait till it finishes this cycle and start another cycle Under visual, we've got um, a couple of cursor choices, large cursor and cursor color. I'm going to turn the large cursor on and you'll see the scanning cursor immediately gets much thicker. I can also go into cursor color and change it to a different color, whatever the user prefers.